This is Twit. All right. Tell me, Micah, what do IMAX movies and Palm Pilots have in common? Well, nothing, right? Yeah, nothing. No, um, <laughs> let's take a look. I will I will describe this. Uh, let's take a look at a TikTok that IMAX posted a week ago uh, where they were showing the sort of ridiculous engineering feats the company had to do in order to bring Oppenheimer to IMAX. I think it's 11 miles of uh, of film on these special reels. But as you're watching yeah, this video, uh, yeah, it's a huge platter. Um, you'll notice that the video starts out with a kind of zoomed in shot of a tablet of some sort, upon which you can see a palm device uh, that is, it, it appears to be some sort of palm pilot emulator running on a tablet screen. And as is the way of the internet, where IMAX was trying to show the a film platter and show, they're talking about these little orange bits uh, that helped to extend the platter out to be long enough for the runtime of Oppenheimer. Everyone instead focused on the tablet that is running uh, what appears to be uh, Palm OS software. So, the Verge did a deep dive into this. Once again, David Pierce is uh, responsible for my story of the week. Uh, thank you, David. And this time it's about uh, this, this Palm Pilot. So it says, the, the headline of the piece is, here's why the best IMAX movies still need a Palm Pilot to work. And oh. they don't need, a, it turns out, a physical Palm Pilot. They can just use an emulated Palm Pilot. This is the M130. Uh, and this little device is basically controlling the system that feeds the film into the projector. Um, it was released in 2002. It's got a tiny little 160 by 160 display. It's two inches diagonal and a little tiny uh, uh, processor as well. But uh, what this does is... It will um, control what they call the, quote, quick turn real unit, the QTRU, uh, and it just makes it so that the reels that get fed into the projector are running at the proper speed for the film. So depending on what you're showing, how how fast it needs to run, how slow it needs to run, Um it has to be running at all times, uh, in this case as an emulation. And there are some little uh, kind of details about this. This, and I won't go. I won't share them all because I want everybody to go check out the article. Um, but there's a little bit of text on there that says "take up," and according to the Verge, who spoke with a person knowledgeable of how this technology works. Take up uh, defines which platter is ready to receive the film after it goes through the projector. There's a, a line called feed, which defines which platter is feeding film into the projector. So you could say, you know, feed one, feed two, feed three, um, which with Oppenheimer being 11 miles long uh, and weighing 600 pounds, I would imagine that you would need to have... Um, some more reels. And then uh, there's just a little line at the bottom that says locked. And if it's locked, that means it's ready. So it's locked and loaded, ready to go. Um, now, everything else is fairly mechanical. And I think that's what makes this really fascinating is that uh, the feeding process, the film process, all of that is very mechanical. And this uh, palm <laughs> system that's part of the QTRU is kind of the only quote unquote, high tech bit of the process. So something low tech in our modern uh, world is the highest tech part of the process. And I think that that adds to some of the charm that these mm -hmm. uh, film directors, you know, have about this, that it's, it's how we used to do things and uh, there's no reason to change it. And, uh, it, you know, it, it worked that way before. So we might as well keep that going. Um, which makes me think about how uh, folks like Christopher Nolan and others who are big film people might not be too fond of George Lucas, given that he uh, was at the forefront of making digital film uh, what it is today. You know, so many films are uh, produced digitally and... Hmm. 
then there are these folks who are trying to hold on to the old way of doing things. And there's that, that, uh, that, that, you know, combat there because if Lucas had not used funds to uh, essentially bequeath theaters all around, uh, at, at the very least the United States, maybe around the world with digital projectors, then that would not have kicked off the revolution that is digital film, at least, you know, for some time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he kind of saw it as Postponed this it. is the future. And then he's like, but I'm not going to wait for the future. <laughs> We're going to make it happen now. Um, now it is, uh, interestingly, they don't really touch the uh, Palm Pilot device in emulator form or even if it was in physical form. It just sits there. Um, it is running kind of all on its own and you don't really have to interact with it other than than doing it. But I do want to read a little bit more It's here. It says... Um, Quote, IMAX Engineering designed and manufactured an emulator that mimics the look and feel of a Palm Pilot to keep it simple and familiar for IMAX film projectionists. The emulator uh, runs on a WinMate panel PC, which is a 10.1 inch Windows tablet hmm. uh, that was designed to kind of be outside of conference rooms to do schedules and video conferencing. So they've taken this WinMate tablet PC and stuck it on the wall. And then they want these projectionists who have always used that Palm Pilot to do what they needed to do to continue to do that. Um, and this really is, it just seems a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of yeah. situation where why would they invest in doing this whenever uh, everything works as it does? And then to run the risk of things not working, um, then there's no reason to do it. And of note, also in this Verge article, there are only 30 theaters worldwide yeah. that can even show this full 70 millimeter print. 19 of them are in the US. Um, most of the IMAX experiences out there are digital. So you would have to go to one of these specific locations. So if there are 30 and they're all running this Palm Pilot. Let's let them keep running the Palm Pilot emulator on a... Let me just read... I'm just going to read the full uh, name. Winmate W10IB3S PCH2AC PoE panel PC. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, just rolls off the tongue. Does it not? There, it rolls off the tongue like that film rolling off the reel. Yes, indeed. There is a... Uh, there. There is... I like that. Um uh, the AMC Metreon in San Francisco will have this in its, oh, in in its, its full, full glory. glory. Yes. Oh, so. I should knock on the projectionist booth and say, can I see your Palm Pilot? He's like, ah, oh, you too. <laughs> <laughs> that stupid TikTok. Yeah. I read that article. I saw that TikTok. Yeah. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. And uh, and if you do fix it and then it breaks more, then why would you? Yeah. Don't. Let's, right. Let's well, just and, leave it. And, yeah. And, and investing the, the time and resources into recreating something that exists in a literally like a, a couple of handfuls of, of right. cinemas. But at the same time, I mean, th there is a, a time at which that thing's going to need to be replaced, yeah. right? Like yeah. it's not going to last forever. I can't imagine. Right. I, uh, but I wonder, but, uh, maybe it does. This feels like one of those situations where all of the projectionists are going, why did someone tell people this? Now they're going to come around and take away our Palm Pilots. Yeah. And yeah. I, you will pull it from my, cold dead hands oh boy this just reminds me i it, once upon a time i worked in the in the uh movie theater industry for probably like five or six years and at one point i managed a movie theater for a couple of years and so and i at that theater i wasn't responsible for replacing the platters if i had worked at a different mo uh, movie theater i would have been but oh, there was wow. a union projectionist there uh that kind of uh walked between two different uh cinemas to to manage all that stuff but i was very close to and very familiar with the technology behind the scenes which makes me really interested in, in like a kind of a, a a nerdy like theater uh buff sort of way to get in the booth and kind of see one of these things rolling because that platter is giant i mean it's huge it's the fact that it's 600 pounds of film like i would love to miles, see this print 11 miles yeah, of film i would love to see this print i'm sure it's amazing 
Hey, I'm Rod Pyle, Editor-in-Chief of Ad Astra Magazine, and each week I join with my co-host to bring you This Week in Space, the latest and greatest news from the final frontier. We talk to NASA chiefs, space scientists, engineers, educators, and artists, and sometimes we just shoot the breeze over what's hot and what's not in space, books, and TV. And we do it all for you, our fellow true believers. So whether you're an armchair adventurer or waiting for your turn to grab a slot in Elon's Mars rocket, join us on This Week in Space and be part of the greatest adventure of all time.